Joining me today is David Fitzgerald. He is the author of Nailed, 10 Christian Myths That Show Jesus Never Existed at All and The Complete Heretic's Guide to Western Religion. Well, David, as you know, we talked about your book, uh, it was either last week or the week before on the show, questioning whether the historical Jesus even existed. This is not a conversation about whether Jesus existed as the Son of God born to the Virgin Mary, but died and, and resurrected, etc. And the feedback was crazy from people agreeing and people disagreeing and people saying, obviously, the historical Jesus existed. So tell us how you first came to question the existence of the historical Jesus. Right. I mean, 15 years ago, it never even crossed my mind that there might not have been a Jesus. That seemed ridiculous. Um, ironically, it wasn't until around 2000 that I got curious to know what is it in the Gospels that he really said and really did, and how much of that is just legendary, you know, uh, baloney, let's say, that just got added on later. Um, and so it wasn't until I actually started looking and trying to parse that out that I realized, first of all, wow, our sources for him are really shaky to begin with. In fact, they really just boil down to the four Gospels, and the four Gospels really just boil down to Mark's Gospel, which seems to be an allegory. And, uh, but I'm, I'm with you. I'm blown away by how polarizing this issue is among atheists. You know, I get that Christians don't like the idea. It's kryptonite for Christianity. But it's, it amazes me how many atheists don't just disagree with it. I mean, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But how many are so vociferous about it? And it's just like all of their bullshit alarms go off and they, oh, this is like Holocaust denial or this is like climate change denial. Um, and really, it's not the same thing at all. All right. And then just just so you know, because we are on broadcast TV and radio, we want to avoid the seven dirty words. Uh, so uh, let me ask you this. There are some supposed non-religious documents or pieces of evidence that suggest that the historical Jesus did exist. So here's just one of them, and I'd be curious to hear your take on it. Tacitus, who is generally accepted as a true Roman historian in his annals mentions Jesus in a passage which many scholars, not all, many scholars accept as authentic regarding the Emperor Nero, saying the founder of this name, Christ, had been executed in the reign of Tiberius. And there's some other examples of this, right, which are certainly very old references, but they're presumably non-religious. What do you well, say about those? Right. Yeah, those are all legitimate references. Tacitus, Suetonius, uh, Pliny the Younger, all these ones are mentions. Mostly they're talking about Christianity. But what we have to know about that is when they mention Christ, they're talking about this figure worshipped by the Christians. None of them are talking about Jesus themselves. And how they're, do you know that? How do you and, know that? Oh, because you just look at the context of what they're saying. They're discussing other things, and this the, the beliefs of this particular cult happen to pop up. You know, but what what I want to point out is none of them are contemporary with Jesus. These are all well into the second century, um, generations after after Jesus. None of them are making arguments or pronouncements about Jesus himself. They just happen to mention him, the figure that is worshipped by these early Christians. We don't have any contemporary references to Jesus during his time or even close to his time. Well, what the about what about uh, what about Thalos from 55 AD, right? In the three-part history of the Mediterranean. And again, even there it's not a direct reference to Jesus as an individual, but it's mentioning the eclipse that supposedly happened around the date of Jesus's crucifixion. So it's right. It, it, you're right in that it's not a very specific reference, but it is at least only 55 years later. But here's the thing about that. Even that reference comes to us from a line, a chain of different Christian authors, mm. and it gets changed what it's, the meaning of that is as it goes through each one. But here's the thing, that's talking about an eclipse. It's the Christian commentators on it who attach it to Jesus's date. We actually don't know what date Jesus was supposed to have died. We, it's a guessing game of even what year it was, depending on what years Pilate was in, uh, in power and what days that if the Synoptic Gospels are right, Passover fell on a Friday. If John's Gospel is right, it had to fall on the uh, 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 the, the day after Passover had to fall on a Friday. Um, the Gospels disagree with themselves on that. Um, but 
all these all these references supposedly to you know earthquakes or to supernatural darkness at the crucifixion those are all just eclipse accounts that christians have jumped on and said oh look this must be jesus's eclipse one, we know one thing i received a lot of was mm -hmm. the desire for you to respond to the claim and i got this from five or six people who said david ask david fitzgerald about the fact that there is more evidence for the historical Jesus's existence than there is for Plato's existence. And this was a, an interesting thing because many people wrote to me about this. Has this become a talking point around this? Is this why I heard about Plato from so many? That's weird. You know, um, I haven't heard that. I've heard it compared to Alexander the Great or Socrates. Um, the ironic thing about that is the, whether Jesus existed or not, the evidence that we have for him is so shaky that for all extents and purposes, even if there had been a Jesus, there isn't one anymore. But to compare Jesus with anybody else in the ancient world is kind of apples and oranges to begin with. Uh, first of all, if we have bad evidence for Jesus or if we have bad evidence for Plato, they don't have any effect on each other. But um, we should be right to question Socrates, for instance, because there's people who think that Socrates was just invented by Plato. Homer is another great example. When you compare the evidence for Jesus and the evidence for Homer, we know Homer was made up because when we read the Iliads, some passages talk about bronze weapons, some passages talk about iron weapons. So these stories come to us over hundreds of years. Um, so that argument sort of backfires on people. All right, so again, the book is nailed. Ten Christian myths that show Jesus never existed at all. We've been speaking with David Fitzgerald. David, uh, very, very interesting to talk to you, and I have zero question at all that the controversy is going to continue on this. For sure. If I can just say one last thing, this isn't a fight between historicists and mythicists. It's a fight between historians who take the myth theory seriously and those that dismiss it out of hand, right or wrong. It needs to be taken more seriously.